Thank you. Welcome. No problem. <laughs> Craig and uh, Kyle stayed tonight night here and then we're going to go up the rest of the way they gathered some firewood and have a little extra. <laughs> ah, cool. Nice looking cave. So the problem was there was snow. I told him don't go up there for snow. Just stay in fucking base camp. Build out. Yeah. Wait for the flash flash to come back. Oh no. This is two thirds, I'll give you that. This is solid two thirds. You do that one more third, we're good. Yeah, I can do another third for sure. This is the angle we're going up at. If you don't believe me, watch me just simply... Sp <laughs> That's down. This is straight. That's where he is. And if you can see there's, there's where we go up. So absolutely beautiful, amazing spot. There's the... Uh, that's the arrowhead that we're going to get to eventually. So just not worried about people finding this spot because... I don't, this is dangerous guys. Like I, you know, I talked about in that last little segment about how I worry. I do worry like, you know, one slip and this is like, you know, I can't even kick a rock down to show you cause it'll, <laughs> it'll knock him out. So, but, uh, we're doing great. We got, we definitely have the power. This is, uh, you know, two thirds of the way and we're what 
four hours into it, about. So we've been killing it, considering the weights on our backpacks, because I'm carrying like six liters of water. He probably doing the same. It's a lot of weight with all the other gear and the food that we have. So uh, we're doing great. The hike's going amazing. Yep. Gotcha. I can wait. Woo! That's how I feel. That was very manageable. That's the way up. You need to go every single time. So, because the other path, holy fuck, man, there's some cliffs and shit. There's like, there's like a spot where it's like 20 meters, there's no trees, it's a cliff. And if you slip, you die. We didn't see that spot. So, high five, brother. Yeah, nice. there you are, you're glowing. Oh, yeah, man. So, nice. That's the tree right there. That one right there on the other side of its nail. That's where the Sasquatch snagged the apple. Wow. Awesome. Should have put an orange thing on my roof so you can see the shucks, see the shucks in here. Kind of. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. I see that. <sighs> yeah, nice. I got a shot of clouds coming through here. Uh -huh. Right on the ground. In that way. So I put my camera on the tripod there. Amazing. This is where I slept with Survivor Man. I was above him by the fire. You can see he was down there and I just slid it. <laughs> just yeah. like sliding into him. The Sasquatch rock knocked down over there. And then up here another 67 yards is another camp. So here's our wood pile we didn't use last time. Oh, that's it. Amazing. That is it. Little guy. You're thinking that this tree was like, like that thing. Yeah, I did.
We're shifting base camp from our lower camp, about 300 meters down, to this higher elevation camp. There's the fire pit. Still spectacular views. Todd's on his way up. All the cutaway shots you can get from Holy crap. I don't know why that does look pretty to me. That is super cool. Firelight on the tree with the moon in the back. Oh my god. Your, how's your trip been up here? Oh, so amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is just spectacular country. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've hiked all over the world. I've, I've been in mountains all over the world, including the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is probably the most picturesque, mm -hmm. uh, magnificent mountain scenery and vistas that I've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. Can you drink the water around the Himalayas? Do they have glacier runoff that you can they drink? They do have glacier runoff, yeah. Yeah, so you can yeah, drink the water there. Because yeah. I, I, that's one thing I love. It's spectacular drinking the, the glacier water out here. Like that's all, most of what we drink, so. Oh, absolutely, it is, it is stunning and beautiful. But, but he, this dude's tough, right? He has been all over the world. He's, he does backcountry expeditions. You, do, you kayak, you know, for or canoeing expeditions for days at a time. That's not normal, normal people, you know. They, look, at, look at the altitude up here. Look at this, guys. Like that's, that's the trail down, right? And it's just, it's like that all the way. And that's, it, it, as steep as that looks, like this is level. This is the trail down. It's steeper than that. I mean, you're you're on all fours a lot of the time, and it's not wide. This is you know you're never more than 20 meters across, and usually the path that you have to stay on that's the, the best path with the least angles is you know two yards across. So we got a uh, about an hour and a half of that to get through before we can get to some stable, decent ground in these mountains. So it's it's not for the faint of heart. This is a, it's a tough hike. Gotta do this nice and easy. This is way steeper than it looks.
I don't see any apples either. Not so far. Not one. All gone. No. No people? No people. Just Sasquatch. Wasn't that pika? Wasn't that little pika? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Amazing. Yeah, it's totally cleaned off. First one down this morning, sir, and what did you see? Well, coming down here, seeing the famous uh, apple gifting tree here. Yes, this is the one on yeah. Survivor Man. Absolutely. Uh, we put up 12 apples. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's we a lot them, of apples. Had them spread out high. Yeah. Uh, very high. Yeah. And also on the tree and also on those two branches, those two logs hang, um, on the side. Uh -huh. Came down this morning, completely cleaned out. Completely up. cleaned out. My friend, as we discussed a moment ago, there are three Count them three beans. A mountain goat's not gonna take those. If you think that pika is gonna take those apples, don't ever come out in the wilderness, <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. So the famous pika that knocked over a game trail, the game trail cam for Survivor Man, did not take 12 apples in one night. No. So Jason, uh -huh. is there any chance there's a human being up here? Absolutely not. Like how likely is it possible a human being was up here? Zero. Zero point zero percent. Concur. Absolutely. How likely? Is it that a bear came up here and took those apples? It is highly unlikely to get a bear wouldn't be coming up here. No. There's nothing for a bear to do up here. No, this is not bear country. They don't come up to altitude. There's no food for them here. Absolutely. He wouldn't be, there's just, the, the, the chances of a bear coming up here are, I'd say like 0.1%. There's no resources for them. My friend here, how, what percentage would you say you think Sasquatch took those apples? I'm going to say probably 100%. Yeah. And, and you know, you had them up really high, man. Oh, had, yeah. You had some, way, like, way up there. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I did a little bit of climbing. You did? Yeah. So I put them up high. They're all gone. Yeah. And I jammed them on there hard. Oh, yeah. And there's no, there's no apple on the ground. There's no debris. No. There's no, there, there's no scratch marks from a bear. A bear would leave scratch marks. So that takes bear out of it. Yeah. So if you take, if you take, <laughs> now, there's no scratch marks on here. We'll go over this with a fine tooth cone. No bear's ever taken apples off this tree when I put them up because they got to climb a bit. There's not a single solitary scratch of any kind in any way, shape or form. We'll go over it a little harder. There's just not, they would show up so well. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go here, watch. So if I just look at that. So you need, it's important you see this. So, so there's nothing there. I got the sun in my eyes. Now watch this. Can you see that? Look at that mark I just made. I can make a T. Look at that. I just made a T with my pathetic finger. A bear's claw? <laughs> You think a bear touched that tree and there's not a scratch on it and those apples were you know high up in the air a bear had to put his claws on there he had to do a little bit of climbing and there's so now i'm telling you you see that oh, yeah. zero percent chance it was a bear yeah. zero percent chance it was a human yes no other being could take 12 apples like that in a night we have successfully had incredible amazing sasquatch activity up here you see a track Oh boy. Okay. So live, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit, dude. What do you mean potential? That, oh my God. Oh my God, dude. You know what that is? That's running. Remember I told you that half foot? That's running. Look at it. I can see the toes and everything on it. Holy shit. And then you're seeing this one here, that busted compression. Yeah. Like a, like a, like on a side, mm -hmm. that one though, that's holy shit, man. Wow. So that's, that's fresh as shit, right? Yeah. So what the Sasquatch do is, so this isn't a long track. They don't have balls of their feet. They have a mid tarsal joint in their foot. So how did that get like this though? That's a really interesting track. But anyways, I'm, I'm going to have to look into this cause I've, I've not seen them have the angle like that. And then the toes at the top, 
but that's a really heavy I mean Jason take your foot and smash it on the ground right there please okay no, you see, that did nothing I mean can you even see that Jason do it again so Jason's a 200 pound man stomping with all his power he's not leaving a damn mark and look at this that's uh two inches down his is I wouldn't even notice his yeah, I would notice see. nothing so something extremely heavy and powerful that's fresh as fuck yeah yeah Sorry for swearing y'all, but that is super, super fresh. It's very organic, very organic. Like there's motion in it, it's organic. And to be at half foot, like so they, they do run buys, that's why I just said they do run buys here. That's a run. And to be running, uh, can you imagine running through here like that? Oh my God. Like, no. Remember, I had a sighting coming down here. This is, where, this is what I was doing when I caught a little fast watch. I was, in, I was crossing some logs, it's not here anymore. I looked back up and he was on that trail, looking down at me. It's so black. It's so black. He had a little afro. It's so black. I was like, man, that's a rock. Then he blinked and I was like, there's no rock. And he was just looking at me like, what's up? I actually pulled up my bear banger. I could have shot him with my bear banger. Well, I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't. <laughs>
we left at 2 30? 2 30, yeah. Like 8? Yeah. Oh God. We did nothing. We just walked and laid around and round up. So <laughs> yeah. It just didn't work, right? Oh, yeah, you know, for sure. Absolutely. Fantastic, man. Me too. I, I'll never forget that one. What happened was, I believe that Sasquatch, we had apples put up, and we were in between the Sasquatch and the apples. So he was trying to get past us to go up through the apples. He didn't, obviously. And then after I'd seen him, and verbally communicated with him. He moved around to the cliffs and was probably trying to go around the opposite side to get to the apples, which is when Jason heard him along with me. And what precisely happened was the moon was creating shadows. Jason was obviously up. We heard clear as day something climbing through the rocks. It was large and heavy. It was very, very significant. No mistaking it. This is just probably three minutes after my sighting. So then Jason was looking down the hill. The moon was casting shadows over the trees and he looked down and we both saw a shadow move. And what he did was he saw the shadow and he looked over at me and he said, my God, that looks like a shape of a, of a bean. And then he looked back because he's in a bit of a, like, you know, he just woke up. I just seen a Sasquatch. Things are, there's a, it's a pretty tense moment. He looked back at me, goes, it moved. And I go, yes, I haven't looked away from it. So he looked down at it and he saw that the shadow had moved from one direction to the other and it was the shape of a bean, which was a Sasquatch. He looked back at me and said, I can't believe I just saw it move. I go, I know, I'm still watching it and it's still moving. He looked back again. He goes, oh my God, it moved again. Yes, because it's moving. So then the shadow kind of went behind a tree and then we didn't see it after that. So what happened was I saw a Sasquatch Woke up Jason, Jason and I both heard something large climbing around on the cliffs. And then we both saw the shadow of an upright, tall, wide Sasquatch shape, which was a Sasquatch. And then after that, in the morning, we woke up, went around, deduced that Sasquatch was indeed at least nine feet tall, probably just under nine feet. I would say he's an individual I'd never seen before I had a completely although he's clearly a Sasquatch with the wide nose the lips are the same the eyes the head shape was the same it was clearly a different individual like a very very different looking individual like I would be able to identify like from from talking about one colleague to another one woman to a different he looked very different to me and uh, he was focused on those apples he'd been coming around for those apples and the track that we found was very definitive. We had walked up through and past that log. We did There was no track there the day, the, in the day when we walked up. We went back down there and saw a definitive, clear, 100% crystal Sasquatch track from a Sasquatch that I had seen the previous night. So very, very significant uh, and incredible encounter. This is just the beginning, though. Remember, this is day one. Jason and I go back up, and I'm not going to give it away, but a whole lot more happens. So... Stay tuned to these videos. Very, very exciting night. Thank you so much, Jason Shoot, for coming up on that trip with me. I've had, uh, I've taken about six people now up to the top of Radium, in, not including Survivor Man, but only Jason Shoot, Todd Standing, and Survivor Man have spent more than one night up there. Survivor Man <coughs> has spent two nights up there. Jason Shoot and Todd Standing have spent two nights up there on that expedition so we're part of the three people that have spent two or more nights i've spent up to six nights up there by myself uh, and i will be doing that again next year the area just precipitates incredible incredible amazing stuff and uh, i'm really really excited